Awesome. Hello, everyone. Uh, oh, so, sorry. So the next speaker is uh, Dr. John uh, Hauser. Please. Uh, Thanks. Um, so hi, I'm Jesse. Uh, I'm going to talk about some work t uh, I did together with Philippe Rigolet, also in the room, on rates on total variation denoising. Um, total variation denoising is an image denoising algorithm for everyone here who hasn't seen it before. Um, it's been developed in the in the early 90s by Rudy and Osha Fatemi, and uh, the method and the paper has since been um, insanely popular, as can be seen by the more than 9,000 citations on Google Scholar. Uh, so let me quickly show you how it works. You pick your favorite Playboy model, uh, apply some noise, uh, and run total variation denoising on it, and you get back a denoised picture um, in which you've lost some of the resolution, but got also rid of most of the noise, um, but it still does make the subject more compelling. Um, so what's, what's the idea behind this? Um, you just penalize um, value, uh, penalize jumps between JSON pixels on a grid. You just lay grid over the picture and you think that uh, for normal, natural images, uh, most adjacent pixels, sh pixels should behave similarly, uh, while this is not the case for a noisy image. Um, to analyze this, uh, let's just pick a very easy Gaussian sequence model where our signal is our ground truth theta star put up by some homoscedastic noise, um, Gaussian noise with variance sigma squared. Uh, the total variation noise is then defined as the solution of a simple optimization problem having a quadratic fit term here, plus a penalty term, which is an L1 term, in which we just feed all the differences bet between the pixels, um, traded off by tuning parameter lambda. And you already see here, we could also think about doing this for an arbitrary graph. So the, the grid here is not special in any way. We could think about regularizing any signal, um, having regularity along a graph given by an edge set E. And D here is just the matrix giving us the, um, the corresponding pixel differences. And it's a convex problem, so we have efficient solvers. So our goal here is just to establish rates. So how fast can we denoise the image? And for this, let's quickly compare this to a similar problem. Most of you have probably seen the lasso. So let's quickly recap um, what kind of rates we could expect to get um, from this if we replaced the matrix D just by the identity and we're penalizing uh, the elements instead, and note that this case is actually equivalent to soft thresholding. Um, for a suitable choice of the tuning parameter, which only depends on the variance here and um, the, the data we gathered n, um, we get a fast uh, so-called L1 rate, um, where we pick up the L1 complexity of our data and we get a fast rate of 1 over n. Uh, this can be pretty bad if our signal has high complexity, if the L1 norm is large. So usually one would also like to see something that's scale-free, uh, which we can in terms of an L0 rate where we pick up the sparsity of the signal instead. Uh, moreover, this can also give us good rates even if our signal has not low L1 norm or low sparsity but is well approximated by uh, some signal which has. Um, and we call this an oracle inequality where we trade off the L2 fit uh, with the complexity terms associated um, to the comparing signal um, theta bar. So what can we show about TV? The best available results so far have a rate of um, n to the minus 4 fifths. Um, and also, in this case, the tuning parameter has to depend on our data complexity, which we do not want in practice. So um, let's try to do better. Let's just start with the lasso case again and see how to prove something like this. Um, we just start off by using optimality. And uh, we see that we already pick up the correct L1 norm on the right-hand side. The only thing we have to handle is the scalar product. For this, let's just do Helder and use a high probability bound on the maximum of Gaussian, normal, uh, Gaussian random variables um, of order log n. So in the case of total variation, uh, just, just introduce your D and we see that we have the correct complexity on the right-hand side, but we have to somehow match the scalar product. How do we do this? Let's just assume D is invertible for now and let's just produce a D there. Uh, we can do the same trick. 
and we can use the same high probability bound just with the, an additional factor of rho entering here. And rho, which is the central object of the further analysis, is the maximum of the column norm of the transformation D. So we have to get a handle on some spectral properties of the transformation that gives us the edges instead of just the elements. Note that um, D in general does not have to be invertible. We can just work with the pseudo inverse instead. So the main thing to analyze now is rho. And the nice thing that we could show is that rho is actually bounded only by a log factor. So that in indeed we can also expect fast rates for total variation denoising in 2D um, just up to log factors. And the analysis here uh, relies on having a very explicit handle on the spectral decomposition of the, the associated graph Laplacian of the grid. Um, we can plug this back into what we've just shown. And we get uh, the fast rate picking up the L1 complexity, uh, so the total variation complexity of our signal. And this improves uh, in particular on the n to the minus 4 fifths we have shown, uh, we've seen in a paper by um, Wang, Sharpnik, Smola, and Tipshirani. Um, moreover, since we've also talked about L0 rates, um, we can also get an L0 rate actually for any graph just by introducing um, an additional factor bounded by the maximum degree of the graph. So in the case of the grid, that's very easy. Uh, we just have four, so we still get a fast L0 rate. And moreover, we can combine this into an oracle inequality. So that's very cool. Um, now we can try to take this a step further and think about, okay, um, we can allow for misspecification. Can we actually use this to gain some insight in other complexity classes? So how does TV regularization perform on something like Holder functions? And we see that using the amount we get, we actually are near optimal in, um, a, lot of, in a lot of complexity classes, in particular um, Holder smooth classes and piecewise constant classes, things, um, classes that were considered in imaging and also for biasotonic matrices considered in statistics. Uh, now, one could think about generalizing this. Uh, what happens in high dimensions? In high dimensions, unfortunately, um, we are no longer optimal in all, the, all of these cases. In particular, um, for Helder functions, we pick up a factor, uh, an additional factor of D in the exponent, um, which is clearly suboptimal. Uh, at least now, this is what c comes out of our analysis. Um, but it seems to be an intrinsic problem with total variation denoising, since we're picking up the complexity of the boundary of certain cells which we used to approximate. Um, and in this case, specialized solvers might just be um, more well-tuned to the, the complexity of the functions. Uh, but it's still remarkable that the 2D denoiser actually um, manages to be optimal in all these cases, and that might be one of the reasons why it's so popular in practice, because it can actually adapt to a lot of the smoothness that we see. So let's summarize. We've already seen um, that also for the hi for high-dimensional grids, we can um, bound rho by a constant, which in our analysis at least grows exponential with a dimension, unfortunately. Um, and let's quickly contrast this to the case of the, gr um, the path graph. So actually in 1D, the analysis is much more intricate and has been done before. Uh, so the uh, one rate here is n to the, the minus two-thirds. And in particular, a lot of work went into finding a good L0 rate for this, um, which was found by Dallagnon, Iberi, and Lederer uh, in terms of the minimum spacing of uh, the patches of constant signal um, in our ground truth. Um, and it, this rate for well-spaced signal can be of order 1 over n, but it can be arbitrarily bad if the spikes of my signal are very clustered together. And we see that um, these subtleties all disappear in the high-dimensional case. Let's wrap up with uh, some more examples for graphs. I told you in the beginning we might also consider, consider other models. So the complete graph has been considered as a model if we do not have any prior information on the graph structure um, along which our signal might be smooth. And for the complete graph, we actually get a very fast convergence rate of 1 over n squared. However, this has to be contrasted with the complexity term. So the total variation here might be very large. Imagine you have one spike in a complete graph, um, then um, you'll, you'll immediately get an n 
in the complexity, it could be even n squared. We also considered random graphs as a way of sparsifying um, the complete graph, and we see that actually we obtain um, the same rates um, if you have a d here for the complexity and a d in the denominator. And finally, we um, can also get some rates for star graph and some power graph of a cycle which we used to interpolate between um, path and, um, and a complete graph. Thanks. <laughs>